stop using external shading materials. Yes, I said it. This is something that's been on my mind for the longest. And I do have beginners or just artists in general coming up to me asking like, how do I get my pen drawing so smooth or my graphite drawing so smooth? And I tell them just to use the pen or use the pencil. That's all you do. Their reaction is like, what? What do you mean just use a pen and use a pencil? Like, how do I get this smooth? It doesn't make sense. Like, what tools do you use? Like, do you use a blending stump? Do you use like a rag? And I tell them, no, like, that's not what I use at all. I just use the pen and the pencil. Later in this video, I will show you how to do it. So stay tuned for that. For now, I just want to talk about why I don't like using other materials like a blending stump, a cotton ball, or Q-tip to blend my drawings. I have before, um, I don't do it now, but as a beginner, that's something I did do and it can be helpful at times, but I don't want you to rely on it 100% of the time. Growing up, you know, I would draw almost every day, especially with pencil. And when I go on social media, when I go online, I look at all these amazing talented drawers and I wanted to be just like them. I wanted to have a super hyper realistic portrait or an amazing, cool, drawing that's like the shading is like impeccable but they use the blending stuff they use blending tools so as a young beginner artist of course i'm gonna do that like why not the only problem is i didn't probably know how to use it so i was just using it and i kind of made my drawings look worse so as i got older i became more accustomed to those tools and then i learned how to do better with them but looking back there was a point where I felt like it kind of hindered my drawing abilities. I feel like my technical skills would have came a lot sooner if I didn't use it as much. Let me say this, there's nothing wrong with using a blending stump, a cotton ball rag or anything just to blend your graphite or ink. Like there's nothing wrong with that. I want to share with you guys that you shouldn't use it all the time or rely on it 100% of the time because I personally feel like it can hinder your drawing abilities, your improvement. Learn how to become a pro with the tool you're using and master it. When I started drawing with pen, I cross hatched that first and that's how I blended. But then I used, started using a Q-tip, um, a cotton ball, any rag to blend with, you know, to blend the pen. But I don't do that anymore. I don't like how it looks. I think it's better to learn how to use your tool and get better at it over time. And then that will help you become a better artist. Once you're at that stage where it's like, oh, my drawings look amazing, blended. Like I don't have to use a blending stump. I don't have to use any external tools to blend. Then you can pretty much decide like, okay, let me try it. And if I still like the other version better, then I'm stick to that. Or if I like to blend it better, then I'm gonna stick to that. This, you should learn how to blend or use those tools. I want you to focus on not using those tools as much. When I tell you that shading is super simple, I'm about to break it down for you so you can understand it properly. I'm gonna sketch out this ear and this is what we're gonna be shading. The ear is not perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be readable. The first thing I like to start off with any of my pen drawings or pencil drawings is the outline. I'm gonna start with this outline and I usually outline the darkest areas first. I don't need to outline every single thing. I need to outline so I can have a guide to where I need to shade at. Throw away all the blending stumps. <laughs> okay, not throw it away, but like put them in storage for now. I want you to focus on shading. This is simple shading. For this part, I have to darken this area because it's a really dark shadow. And then it transitions to a lighter area right here. All I'm doing is hatching or you can cross hatch. I'm gonna hatch for now. So just like this, very simple. I rearrange things so you guys can have a better viewing of what I'm doing. This part, very simple, fill it in, one layer of hatching, just like that. And if I wanna transition, so let's say this part is gonna be darker on this end, all I have to do is create another layer by flicking out very lightly. Like that. Once I put down multiple passes, you can see that it's a lot darker now because I hatched these lines very lightly 
and I also flicked out when I was hatching them. So it can have an even transition through this shadow. And if I just want to darken the whole thing, I lightly hatch over the whole entire area. Like that. And then if I want to fill this part in, same thing, just hatch. And if I want this end darker and there's like a darker shadow, all I have to do is hatch again. And that's how you blend with ink. Same here. You see, I created this rectangle. One side is dark, one side is light. Same for the bottom, one side is dark, one side is light. And what I did was I practiced by creating this transition. For this, I filled in the middle on both squares and then I tried to transition from dark to light value to dark to light to dark value. This is great practice for anyone who wants to get better transitioning and shading with a ballpoint pen. Now I could do the same thing for this side if I wanted to darken this. This is about five layers I'm putting down right now. And then darken this end. And then also darken this part. Remember, hatch, cross hatch very lightly. And now all I have to do is hatch this whole thing. You see, very simple. And you can always come back, outline what you need to outline. Uh, you can always darken more of the shadows, like if the, the ends, if you want to darken them. Very, very simple. Uh, this doesn't require any type of blend material, although you can blend ink to a certain point. So if I want to blend this part I'm working on right now, I can definitely do that. It's not something I want to do because when I blend ink, it becomes inconsistent. Same with graphite. When you blend graphite, it can get messy unless you blend super clean. I don't want you to solely rely on just blending tools. But now we're going to use the graphite. Let's say I want to darken this area. I use the same techniques I use for a pen when it comes to shading. Right now I'm hatching. I'm not worried about going one direction with pencil. I'm going back and forth. And then don't forget to outline the dark areas so you can have more of a contrast. And then let's fill this part in over here very lightly. And now since I have my shadows in, I can just hatch or shade the whole thing very lightly. This isn't any special type of paper. This is regular sketchbook paper, regular mixed media paper. You don't need watercolor paper for this technique. The great thing about shading with pencil is that you can erase easily. Unlike pen where it's super hard to erase and sometimes you can't even erase it. So what I do, I like to shade the whole thing to a value that I feel comfortable with. And then I take my needed eraser and erase some of the highlights. Like I said earlier, there's nothing wrong if you do want to use any blending tools. I just don't want you to rely on them heavily because it's really not needed. If that's something you just really want to do and stick to that, then that's okay as well. I want to teach you a simple way to blend without using those tools. That's how you blend shade with a pencil and with pen. Very easy, simple technique. If you look at my drawing in ballpoint pen, 
You can tell I cross hatch and I shave super lightly. I just did the same exact technique I showed you. And then even for this one, this is my Dolly Parton drawing. You can see like the lines just hatching, cross hatching super lightly, building up those layers and creating darker shadows, just knowing when to you know, put in the contrast, when to put in the highlight and then go back to you know more shadow. It's a simple technique. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. And then you can create portraits like these. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you were anything like me and you struggle drawing with pen, I didn't have any teachers. There was like no information out there where there was like an amazing hyper realism or professional artist that can really use a ballpoint pen. So since I didn't have that and I spent over eight years trying to master this ballpoint pen, that's why I put together a digital book on how to draw with a ballpoint pen. It's down below in description. This will really help you progress as an artist. This will really help you become a better pen artist. It has information in there that took me over eight years to learn how to do. So why not share it with you all? I appreciate you guys watching.